Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth episode of the Painting Buddha Academy videos. It is a Signar Warjack, it's an Avenger um, class, heavy Warjack, um, from the, straight from the Iron Kingdoms. Uh, uh, the producer is Privacy Press, as many of you <laughs> might already know. We will show you today how to paint these um, these large surfaces uh, in a smooth uh, way, mm -hmm. but not only very smooth, but with a little um, weathering, um, little subtle weathering, so you can um, utilize this, these techniques to paint uh, either your warband or um, even an army. Okay, so so we're we're aiming for a, a very high tabletop standard here. Yes. Okay, cool. And obviously, uh, this tutorial will cover a lot of techniques uh, using the airbrush. This is the, the airbrush we will be using. It's a, a hardened steam bag, Evolution 2-in-1. As a compressor, we use a, uh, also a hardened steam bag. Uh, it is a quite powerful uh, compressor, actually, that we have. Yeah, and the nice thing about the compressor is uh, it's so quiet, uh, yes. it's really nice for it, filming. It could be on in this second and you wouldn't be able to hear it. It's uh, <laughs> really like a refrigerator or something, it's, it's pretty impressive. So uh, you will be starting with the uh, blue parts of the armor, right? Yes, uh, exactly. The blue parts will come first uh, because they, um, they dominate the model. Uh, it's, um, you know, yeah. consists of a lot of uh, big surfaces, as, as I said before, and therefore it's uh, clever to to see what uh, what is the big what the biggest amount is uh, of, of armor, and then start off with that. Actually, you've started with a black and white foundation. Um, could you tell us why in just a few words? The black and white foundation is good to have both uh, very black amounts uh, in the model, like. Like here, yeah, all, the, all those shadow areas, okay. and also have a very light um, uh, parts uh, on the well, more exposed uh, surfaces that are a bit more uh, up to the, to the top of the model. And uh, also, as blue is a very vibrant color, it's good to have a foundation that um, is not too dark, obviously. Um, so, basically, the blue can, um, yeah, it, um, unfold its whole potential. Yeah, and it still shines through and looks a lot more vibrant on the white foundation. Okay, perfect. So let's, yeah, let's, let's start with the blue. <laughs> yes, let's get right to it. Once you decide to work with uh, with an airbrush, it's important to have a setup uh, or to think about a setup that makes sense and will help you uh, while you work. It's good to be organized. You will need uh, the right consistency to spray from your from your airbrush on a miniature. And um, you will have to um, switch in between the steps. And for this, is it is important to keep, um, yeah, to keep track of the, of the colors and the consistency. And if you look at the palette cam, you will see that I, will, I have uh, three little cups here. This is because we will put the mid-tone that we will be spraying always in the, in the middle cup. The highlight in the in this uh, right cup here, and the shadow color in the left cup. Mm -hmm. That way, we will always be able to uh, correct little mistakes and switch in between the colors uh, very easily. What you will also have to have is uh, a dropper, like, much like this. I mean, this is <laughs> has been used quite a lot, <laughs> but um, you can get this in uh, pharmacies. And uh, it is very useful to take some water with it and uh, to start filling your little cups like this. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, and it's good to fill the airbrush before you work with water as well. So a dropper is something you definitely need. Off screen, I have three of uh, those cups. <laughs> you cannot see them, but um, I use them, um, I use three of them. Uh, because one is for the color there uh, for the water that I use uh, to dilute the, co the color with. Um, one is for to clean the brush also, and one is if I have metallic pigments. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is very important to to really keep your structure and to um, yeah to have these very separated because you don't want metal pigments in your uh, in your airbrush. Okay, and now we will uh, mix the medium uh, blue tone for the for the blue armor in the middle cup that we take from from our uh, palette. And um, the first thing that comes into this cup is a little bit of water. 
Uh, we will not give you exact amounts of uh, water to color ratio uh, because you don't know how long the color has been in the store. So you don't know exactly about the consistency in the pot. It's It differs. Yeah, it differs a lot. So you can't really tell uh, a ratio. Yeah. So it's better to... Um, to find to just find out what consistency you you need to spray and this comes with uh, experience actually with uh, try and error <laughs> mostly but uh, I have a, like developed like a good eye for for the the amount of uh, water I need and the right consistency and I will try to show it to you on here so yeah as I said first off we will need some water and uh, since this is the the medium color, we will need actually quite a lot, um, quite a lot of uh, of color in this cup here, because from this we will um, then mix the the shadow and the highlight color. But uh, yeah, that amount should be fine. We will mix the blue color with uh, basically these um, two uh, blues. Uh, it's one is the enchanted blue from the Citadel Games Workshop range. As you see, it's a very saturated blue, a very clear blue. Yeah. Without any impact, you can take any blue that you that you want from any range. It just has to be a very clear, uh, very pure blue. And we will mute it down a bit with this uh, Mordian blue. It's a blue that is, uh, I would say, a bit. Uh, there is some black in it and a little bit of gray, I think. Um, so it will take down the the color um, just where, the way we want it. In addition to this, we we need some uh, some black. In this case, it's uh, the old chaos black. And a um, little trick, set and varnish, which I always uh, suggest to mix into everything you spray because it will really help to avoid the, this uh, grainy, you know, dusty look. And uh, yeah, will just help to give some, some set and uh, gloss. Or yeah, it it makes the, the color look much more painted than sprayed on. Yes. So yeah, these uh, four components we will now mix into the water that we have here. For this I use a brush also that is a bit uh, beaten, <laughs> it's not the newest brush, but with this I can actually take quite a lot of color from my pots and uh, scoop them into, into these shot glasses here. No need to buy uh, fancy ones, especially since they, they don't, uh, you have to use quite a lot of them in the process. And you can use the, the edges of the shot glass to see how um, Homogeneous, homogeneous, homogeneous. Uh, the how how well the consistency behaves into the glass you see here. Yeah, and how the pigments mix with the water. But this is actually a good consistency for uh, for an airbrush, um, especially since the more color will come in. This this step, this is what you're aiming for. Next, the modium blue. Also, um, more or less same amount um, mixed together. So next color will be a little bit of black, not much because the black really uh, influences the color uh, strongly. So just mix in a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more. Like this. Yeah, really nice dark blue. Not too saturated anymore. Mm -hmm. but yeah, very yes. nice. Okay, and uh, as I said, some satin varnish also as, uh, as a little additive. Seven drops. <laughs> no, again, uh, the amounts are really not so, so important. You should just develop a good feeling for for the consistency. Um, yeah, you need to check it out with your paints at home yourself. Yes. But that should be that should be good. Okay, and the next step is to put this in the airbrush in the uh, airbrush gun and um, start spraying. Perfect. For this, we will uh, have to put on a mask, uh, which is also very important. Um, safety first, so <laughs> as we say. Uh, yeah, so see you in a second with mask. As always, the first and the last thing that come out of your airbrush should be water. So we take the dropper and enter so, uh, give in some, some drops like this. And now we take some of the, the color, the 
medium color that we have mixed and put it in. Mm -hmm. And now we mix it inside the cup with our brush so it uh, mingles. It might be a bit too diluted. I will check first on my hand. Yes, um, actually this is pretty diluted, but it's not so bad. Um, we will just uh, give it a give it a try. Yeah, as you see, you have to turn uh, the model around quite a lot, and um, in this case, the, the color is pretty diluted, but um, you can still spray with it if you take it very slowly then, and use a lot of air, actually, and allow the color on your model to dry. Um, it's a little bit like if you look at my hand. Now it is dry, um, so you you take it slowly and don't try to to spray with a lot of color actually. Yeah, right yeah. Don't, don't rush it. Don't let the water pool on anywhere on the model. Just dry it in between with with air. Yes. Uh, but I think it, the the effect is already quite nice because the the translucent color is, uh, still gives you all that light impact from the black and white. Yeah, exactly. The foundation really helps now, and uh, yeah. But I will have to continue uh, spraying on more. I think I will cover the um, all the white portions also entirely, so it will come out a bit like here. And here it gets darker because of the foundation, and this is exactly the effect that we want to have. So yeah, I will just continue. Also, the distance that you have with your airbrush um, to the with your gun to the um, model will directly um, influence how um, how strong the the color is that you apply and how how big the um, the radius the is. radius is basically. Yeah. Some parts are better to be sprayed on at a bigger distance. I would say that the higher you go up here, the higher the distance should be and the higher the radius should be. So the color is not so uh, poor, like condensed and uh, then while in here there are some spots that you can can paint um, yeah, when you go onto the model pretty uh, pretty near like this yeah. for example here but as a as a rule of thumb is that 
this maybe this makes this illustrates what I what I mean <laughs> that if you go from here you go near if you go a bit further you start to yeah. go further mm, yeah I think it's qu it's qu it's quite easy understandable uh, because I mean in the shadows the uh, the color is a lot stronger and collects more so mm -hmm. okay we continue Also here at the chest, you see that there are, there is a lot of uh, breaks or um, different angles in the armor. Also here, I would go pretty near like this and uh, spray a bit uh, stronger color on directly here like this. And now I will just turn the model around and have a look if I missed uh, certain spots like as you see uh, down mm, there. Yeah. Um, you will have to, um, yeah, to work on them a bit more individually, go in and uh, yeah, correct them like this. Yeah. Also here, the, the arm, I think it needs a bit more mm -hmm. strong impact here. Here you see another uh, of these examples where the color has not really um, color is not really settled so we will have to correct this quickly. Also the fingers. Uh, yeah I think that's that's good for this step. All right and um, the next step will be applying um, some highlight from above, some more, um, some more precise highlight. One question before we start with the highlight color, is there um, any reason why you choose to do the highlights first and then the shadows? Uh, yes, actually if you spray on the highlights uh, after the shadows, often it just looks very artificial. It is important to put the highlights on first so they fall on the model, on the surfaces. And then the shadow kind of corrects them back when we when we apply the shadow. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's why I prefer personally. I, pre I prefer to put on the highlight on first. It makes more sense. Okay, perfect. So let's start with the highlight. Okay. So in order to mix the highlight color, we will take our highlight cup and um, take just a little bit of the of the medium tone into that cup. We don't need so much actually. Um, yeah. That should be more that should be enough and um, now we chose uh, to mix it with uh, skull white uh, it's a very very pure white tone um, actually you have to be a bit careful about that because uh, in this case it's good to, to mix in the, the pure white because we want a good um, basic tone on the armor to um, to be able to wash it down a bit um, but sometimes it looks very artificial to you to go straight for the white. Sometimes it's better to go for a more cream tone first, like a ivory, and that will allow for a bit more natural uh, highlights. Especially, for example, if you if you uh, if you would uh, airbrush some skin, it's very advisable to always use a fair amount of yellow in in the colors. But for here, it's good to we can go straight for the uh, for this white. It will um, be affected by the blue quite uh, quite a lot. Um, sometimes you can also use a gray 
so you all you still have some um, some some space or like some contrast some, left, uh, some room on the top for the brushwork. Like final final highlight by brush. Yes. Yeah. One thing you got to keep in mind is that the highlight color we are mixing now needs to be quite bright because uh, on the figure itself the white from the foundation is still shining through a lot, and you can see the color he is now on the cup is uh, almost the same than on the, on the model right nice. now. So. Once uh, it's completely mixed, you will see. And again, don't forget to, to add enough water so your um, airbrush won't clock. Yeah, but uh, maybe even a, bit, a little bit more white. Some colors are very, very uh, quickly um, influenced by other colors and others need quite a fair amount <laughs> yeah and then you can see I think that would be would be good if it goes on as the highlight mm -hmm. okay again this will go in the airbrush so mask Ta -da. <laughs> since we have sprayed the base tone before it's advisable to add a little bit of water and to kind of Flush it out like this. Then empty your, your gun so it looks like this. Then we add a couple of drops of water and take the highlight color. Again, we, we try it out on our hand or on a different uh, surface than the model. Looks good. And now, um, very, very carefully, we st uh, start to uh, apply it on areas that we want the highlight uh, to be on. Not on everything, but um, we go pretty near and start to add it in on the top side here. And also it's good to uh, think about zenithal theory here. Um, for example, here, the, the yeah, well, <laughs> loincloth <laughs> armor, <laughs> or uh, the armor in between his legs. Um, actually, it, is, um, it has an edge. So the upper side on the left here will obviously be brighter than the side down mm -hmm. there. So here, we, again, we tilt it like this. And then with the gun, we spray it try to reach it uh, in a very sharp way. Yeah, like mm -hmm. this. Okay, also here these uh, this chest piece, for example.
Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I will continue to do this on on the rest of the mod. Alright, so this is the point we are uh, now at the moment. Um, it is important to, to note that um, the highlights now appear very, very bright, but this is because in the next step, the shadows, we will um, apply something like a wash all over the surface to first tone it down a bit and also to smoothen out the, the surface and uh, give it a, a good homogeneous uh, appearance. For this we will take the, the shadow cup <laughs> here. Um, as you see, like the base tone uh, was again the, the medium tone and in this I also added a little bit of black. So this is the result until now. Um, I also add a little bit more of the modium blue here. And very importantly, uh, we will mix in some uh, blue ink. Mm -hmm. The blue ink will uh, is a very you know shiny color usually. Uh, it dries out very shiny, and this is exactly what we want um, to have a little bit more um, yeah, of, uh, shine and uh, depth for the shadow color. Not too much though, because it's a very very strong color. Yeah, but it's nice to have a, a bit uh, satin finish so that, that is a bit richer than the, than the usual airbrush finish. Yes. And also, the, very important at this step, the satin varnish. So it really gets this uh, not too dry look at the end. Yeah, you, can, you can see it here in the, in the cup. This is the, yeah. the thing we were aiming for. And this we will load into the into our airbrush and then apply something like a airbrush wash. So again, mask. Well, 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 it's more like a glaze. It's not. Like oh yes, yes. Running all over the place, but but uh, it's just a thin color film all over it. Exactly. Uh, this is why I like to do the highlight first. Um, it is very difficult to um, to spray highlight colors when you have been spraying with a uh, darker color first with your airbrush. And since I don't really want to clean my airbrush between every step, you have to think economically, <laughs> if that's a word. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to think uh, in a smart way how, what color will come next. I would say that after three passes, you should really clean the airbrush, in, even in a basic way, because you will uh, have some uh, problems with the colors that uh, with the pigments that are still in the cup as you can see here uh, yeah. from from your average work But for the black color, it's no it's no problem uh, you See here water first and then we just give in the shadow color And that should be that Should be it and actually it's good that I still have it on my hand uh, This is more or less what's on the model and now Well, you can maybe even see it shining, <laughs> not so sure, but uh, yeah, this is what we will try to to get to. Maybe not as strong in the, you know, we don't want to cover everything, so... Yeah, it looks quite strong on the highlight. Yes, so now we will go and take some distance and yeah, just see what <laughs> comes out of that, right?
it's really nice how the uh, whole tone of the blue changed and it's more dark. It looks a bit more grim than before. It's not like very yeah, poppy. Not so bright, <laughs> like bright or um, vibrant anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can really use it to radially, you know, tone it down. You can see it here quite well, actually. Um, here it's really, really black and really like dark, you know. And then to the top, it gets to this, uh, to this really like very bright tone. Still, it's blue. And actually, we still have uh, quite a lot of uh, well, bright color here or even white. But this is uh, needed for the tone that comes after that. Actually, we will apply uh, washes with different color tones. And therefore, we need this to be where it is now. <laughs> I'm not so sure if you see the, maybe not, but the shine. There is a, um, there is a shine here. Yeah, you the, can you shadow. can see that it's not like very dull, like that typical airbrush finish. You can really hardly see, see the shine, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, you can still yeah. see the difference. Since I like it so much, I think I will add a little bit more um, of the satin varnish. You could theoretically also use a gloss varnish um, at this point because we really want to. Uh, that some shine comes here. Uh, yeah, we added a little bit of the satin varnish and a little, tiny little bit of the blue ink to the mix. Um, so I hope that the shine will stay this time a bit more. Yeah, but I think mm -hmm. it might work. So let's try it out. So yeah, it might come as news to you that you can actually use your airbrush to uh, to glaze, but it is something that is very very handy. You, you can't only apply like colors in a very flat way, but also as this you can impact colors uh, that you have put on the model before, as long as you apply them very very uh, uh, carefully and thin in a thin way. Okay, so this is the um, this is the the step that we have now, um, and that's that's actually enough for the airbrush work for now, and we will switch on to the brush.